Well, hey everybody, and welcome back to Kiki's Kitchen. I have been doing a whole lot of cooking this week, but I've just been in, involved in various projects. So um, tonight is my uh, St. Patrick's Day, ta-da, uh, dinner for my Bible group. So you've seen me cook the corned beef and cabbage. I actually did that yesterday. I will slice it, put it in a um, baking dish and surround it with my yummy vegetables and put it all in the oven and just heat it. So it's done. What I'm working on today is the Irish soda bread, and I need a green dessert. Now, in years past, I've made um, grasshopper pie, which is very green, but it was a little sweet and a little um, sweet. <laughs> so, I it's minty, and I love mint chocolate chip, one of my favorite flavors. That was just a little too sweet for me. So then the next year I did a red velvet cake, but I used green food coloring. So I made a green velvet cake and that is of course delicious. Um, but I wanted to change it up a little bit this year. That's part of the surprises, right? You gotta keep things moving along and changing. So I am making a pistachio cake and I'm doing that, you know, only I try out new recipes, but they're my friends. So one way or the other, they'll love it. I have backup scones if it, if it completely flops. So I'm going to take my mother-in-law's recipe, so I call it Mamou's Tipsy Cake, and I'm gonna make just a few um, adjustments to it, and I'm gonna make pistachio cake. So let's get started. I'm gonna green it up a little bit. So what I'm, the first thing I'm gonna do is, and I, I'm so sorry, I don't like to call people's names anyway, but um, one of our viewers sent me this wonderful pan release, um, uh, recipe, let's call it. And I keep it in the fridge, as she said to do, and it is equal parts, um, it's equal parts of uh, uh, flour, oil, what's the last thing? There are three things in it. I will, I will get back to you. There are equal parts flour, oil, and something else. Mm, I'm so sorry. Okay, hang on. That's going to drive me crazy. I got to find out. I'm telling you, I couldn't stand it that I didn't know that. So it is flour, equal parts flour, oil, and shortening, hard shortening, otherwise known as lard. So I think I probably did, because um, I filled this. And and then once you get this done, you know, when it comes out, you're gonna stir it up a little bit, of course. And um, then you're just gonna paint it on, I'm gonna use a rose bunt pan today. And you just paint it on your bunt pan into all of the little nooks and crannies and crevices. So I actually wanted to, to, to show you this and we're gonna make it work together. I wanna make sure I get up the, the pole here in the middle because you know that's always a sticking point. And then this one has crevices. And you know, I'll tell you, I feel bad because um, I got so disgusted with my other Nordic Ware, really nice one, that, you know, it, it, I just couldn't get them out of the pan. And I tossed it. And, and that was a really, see, I want you to see that I'm getting in all the nooks and crannies. And uh, then I found this stuff. Now, we'll see. This is only the maybe third time I've used it. But uh, the other two times it worked. Now, honestly, I haven't had anything as intricate as this. But I am going to really make sure I get it well coated. And we'll move on from there. So this cake is made with the basis of this is a box cake. And a, um, a box of pistachio pudding. Um, I am going to add to it some pistachios. Now, normally I would toast, because anytime I bake, I like to toast the nuts first because it just brings out the flavor. But these are roasted already, so I don't need to do that. All right, so that looks really good. Let me get it back up here. And ta-da! Every little surface that I could find is well covered. So we'll put that aside. Put the lid back on this and put this back in the fridge. So um, let's bring it down here a little bit. 
So this is a wonderful cake. Now, like I said, I am, I am experimenting 100%. But quite honestly, I'm just changing the flavor up a little bit. The method I'm using is still the same. And that's what I try to do is show you a method and then have you kind of learn from that. So what I have is I have a classic yellow cake mix and that's going in. I have a quarter of a cup of brown sugar packed, and that's light brown sugar. As I always tell you, if they want dark brown sugar, they'll tell you dark brown sugar. Otherwise, assume light. I have a quarter of a cup of granulated sugar. That's going in. I have one box of, and it is 3.4 ounce pistachio pudding. And that's going. And then I've got, so let's get this whisked together here. Give it a few spins to whisk it together. I do have four eggs, and I wish you could see the difference in here. The broken egg was a farm fresh egg. And the other two, three were from the grocery. I have four eggs. The difference between a farm fresh egg, that vibrancy of the color, unbelievable difference so and richness too you can tell when you make an omelet very good um so i got this just turned up because you know i'm always telling you and i should just take a moment and do it i'm always telling you to whisk your dry ingredients and it does make a difference especially when you've got something the consistency of um of brown sugar because it tends to clump and so I'm just going to whisk it a minute and get it all incorporated. Now remember you're going to see little chunks in here of pistachio because it's pistachio pudding and they do put little chunks, little tiny chunks, but little chunks in there anyway. Okay so I am going to add my eggs. Um, <clears throat> in here. I'm going to do it one at a time as I tell you always. As soon as the yolk breaks, then you can go ahead and add your next one. Unless you already have it broken, then it just kind of pours in. I want all of that richness out of there. We are going to add three quarters of a cup of water and three quarters of a cup of oil, which I just put in one cup. You can see the split. So I'm going to start pouring that in. That get all incorporated. Then I have a cup, a half a cup of white wine. This is Pinot Grigio. It is not expensive. It's like the bottle was maybe five bucks at all. So, in that stone. If you don't do wine, then I guess you could use um, um, a white grape juice or maybe orange juice or maybe just make a different cake because the whole point of this cake is the wine. That's what gives it the flavor. So maybe just make a different cake. Um, I am going to add, what did I do with my pistachios? That's looking very good. Let me get a Don't you hate it when you misplace something? I have a really, really nice um, uh, spatula that is my favorite, and I do not know what I've done with it. 
Drives me crazy when I do stuff like that. Hide it from myself. All right. I'm gonna let this go a little bit longer. And I'll be right with you as soon as it's all mixed up. Actually, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to put in, and I'm going to leave these, I'm going to leave these whole, let me think. Yes. I want the taste. So that is... Let me get this beat up and I'll bring be right back to with you. Okay, so we I have it poured into my bunt pan, and this is a rose, you can't really tell it. So I'm going with my wild Irish rose cake. How about that? You like that? Okay, so I'm gonna put this in the oven. It's gonna go in there for I believe about an hour. Let me look. One hour. And I'm gonna let it cool for just a few minutes and then we're gonna put a glaze on it. So I'll see you in an hour. Okay, so I am onto the glaze, and I'm going to take this off the here, which I cannot tell why I already have lifted it in it perfectly. So what I have in my saucepan is a uh, stick of butter, and I'm melting it. And to that, I'm going to add one cup of granulated sugar and dissolve it in here. This out of the way. Lots going on in my kitchen today, y'all. Okay, so let's dissolve this into this butter and get it stirred in there. Um, my cake pan release worked absolutely perfectly. So look at this. Ta da! So whoever sent me that, and I and I'm so sorry that I, your name is escaping right now me right this moment, but but I certainly do appreciate it. So I have this on a uh, cake rail, get my um, but I want to put it on a, pan, a, a plate with a lip because I want to um, put this glaze on it, and this glaze will go down around the sides and and uh, and I want to capture all of it so I am just going to melt this sugar into this butter I'm not going to make you stay with me the whole time we do it but uh, so I will be back when the because what I'm going to do just so you know is I'm going to dissolve this sugar into this butter and once it has it starts and it's kind of starting to come together now. <clears throat> Let's see. You can see that it's starting to come together. And once it has, which I'll bring you back on camera when it does, I'm, I have a quarter of a cup of my Pinot Grigio wine and I'm going to add that to it. Again, if you don't like or do wine at all, this is just not the cake for you. I really don't even want to offer a substitution because I don't have one. Um, you know, I don't know what grape juice would do to the flavor. It, it, the whole point is it's made with wine. So I say if, if you don't do it, just move on to a different cake. There are tons and tons of cakes out there. This one just isn't for you. So um, let's get this to where we are completely incorporated. You can almost see it'll start pulling away from the side of the pan. So um, <clears throat> everything that I made today, y'all, there are videos on. So I was just not gonna make yet another video on, uh, you know, on um, corned beef and cabbage and cold can and potatoes. I'll repo post my coal can and potatoes, but there's no reason to do yet another video on them. Okay, this is getting to where I want it. So I want you to see down in here, you see how um, almost foamy that is? 
because that's what you want to see. It's kind of cotton candy-y kind of a sort of thing. So now I'm going to carefully, whenever you introduce any kind of liquid to something hot, you want to do it slowly and carefully and whisk, 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 because it will bubble up as this has, as you can see. Just keep stirring. And now it's actually going to reduce and be clear, which is kind of cool. And then you want to go for about three more minutes, but I'm not going to listen, make you listen to me babble for three minutes. So I'll be back in three minutes. Whoops. Okay, y'all, you know me. Miss Gilda Lily, right? So it is St. Patrick's Day. <clears throat> so you know I have to put a drop in this in my... my So that's four drops. You know I had to do that in my um, in my glaze. Got to have a little green, a lot of little of the green. Everyone's Irish on St. Patrick's Day, even for just a day. Yep, it's green. <laughs> and you know me. You know I'm looking for the green sparkles already, right? You know this is how this is gonna roll. All right, got another. Just another. And you know, you, here's the thing. You can feel this. You just don't want any of the grit. You want that sugar completely dissolved. Um, and um, and my cake is still warm. So now, you know what there is, I have seen a similar recipe to this and they tell you to do this while the cake is still in the pan. And I have done it that way before. You talk about not getting the cake out of the pan. Um, so, you know, I just do it this way. It, it comes out to be a beautiful glaze and there we go. So, now I'm just gonna, and it's green, y'all. Pour some down in the middle. And this has got some nice little uh, ridges to my rose. And it's catching. I haven't used this cake, this pan in so long because I could never get anything out of the ridge. So I am so excited and so very sad that I threw away my other uh, really nice bunt pan, to tell you the honest truth. It's just kind of sad. But see, live and learn. So, you know, the other thing I'm going to do is I am going to get a paintbrush because you know I got a million of those. Without knocking over the camera, that's the trick. And I am going to paint some of this onto the sides. I'm struggling for no good reason, y'all. Oops, I put it back. I had my little, uh, my little wheelie bob so I could spin it, but I put it back already, so not worth going back out there for. This is going to be good. I hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm sorry, my head, but like, a, you know, you guys, you know, you know the top of my head better than I do, probably. You see it. And so here's the other thing that I will get a million comments on. Cut it open. No, I'm not going to cut this open. Who would cut their cake before the company got there? Not me or before you left to take it somewhere. Not me. I will try 
to get a picture of it. But sometimes that's not possible. You know, I, I am entertaining people in my home. So, um, if I can, I will. But if I can't, you need to understand that this is a real life kitchen. This is not Food Network paying for my groceries. <laughs> okay. That looks good. So, and part of the unctuousness of this cake is all of this drizzling down inside of it. So, I'm just pouring it all in there. And it'll be nice and green throughout. Right, give me one second and I'll get my green sprinkles because you know I got to do it. If y'all ever saw my sprinkle collection, you'd laugh because it's vast. Okay. Hang in there. I'm guessing. Yep. It will be in the Christmas department. So let's have a little green sugar. Well, you can't really see it as much as I had hoped. So that is probably just enough. So there you have it. This is our green pistachio cake. I'm going to let it sit out and cool. Um, I'm gonna actually kind of try to cover. Did I do that? No. Cover my plate with the green. If you have, there we go. So then it looks like that was our intention. You see that? There we go. So, anyway, this is Mamu's Tipsy Cake with a little variance with the pistachio. And I will try to show you a still picture of a cup piece. You have a good afternoon and happy St. Patrick's Day a little early. Bye.